Hey there, everybody. Um, so ready for another uh, video. And um, what I was going to talk about today is uh, I decided that I want to give uh, Emacs shells another go. Uh, this is something, you know, I use Emacs for a lot, but I never quite you know, got into using them as my shell. Uh, maybe because I started, you know, and you know, like I was still using Unix systems as dial-up, so using an editor on a 1200 baud modem or even a 300 baud modem was god awful painful. Uh, so you really didn't want to, uh, you know, so like command line work with this terseness, etc. I don't know, um, but I thought I would give it another shot, and I thought I would um, go with eShell. And I did a little video before and a little bit of eShell stuff. But what I found is um, one of the things I wanted to be able to do was quickly switch eShells, and that's something that. Um, uh, there were there were various shell switchers. So if we go to Melpa, uh, I don't remember if we'll find them here, but you know, um, shell switcher. You know, there were ways of switching shells, um, but there wasn't anything specific for um, for e shell. Uh, and the idea, if you don't know, is that e shell is really um, it's not just running another shell like z shell or bash or whatever. It's actually written in Emacs and it's a more Emacsy shell and it's pretty universal. Uh, not that that matters to me because I exclusively use Linux. Um, but then I was like, well, let me take a look. And I also wanted to look at other customizations. So one of the things I looked at was, um, you know, I, I, and I like that things are available on Melpa so I can just easily install it. Um, and I saw things like, um, you know, help and... Um, did you mean if you type in the wrong command, a couple of um, prompty things, etc. cetera. Um, and I also stumbled on this or shell or or e shell. Um, and this was kind of cool because it, um, this person, the, the author here, um, tied together a lot of these features and also had a next shell and a previous shell, etc. cetera. Um, I didn't like the idea that it wasn't on Melpa, so I had to install it separately, but I tried that out. And then I noticed that, um, you know, it's cool, but it's just using, like here, eShell did you mean, and eShell prompt extras, and eShell up, the other packages, plus a few customizations, and I didn't like all the packages. You know, they, they didn't work for me. Um, so I thought, well, let me just try installing some of the packages I like. And, you know, changing shells can't be that hard. It's been a long time since I've done eLisp, so, so let's dive into that. Uh, so first, in terms of configuration, um, let's get this up here. A few things I did. So one is this thing over here, the exec path. Um, if you just if you run eShell, uh, particularly if you run it if you run Emacs from a terminal, um, it seems to mostly work that you're just using you know like you're getting the path from the shell. Um, but if you run it through something, if you start it as a server as a service when you log in in the background and then use the um, connect to the Emacs server, which is what I do, um, it's not getting that full path. So uh, this package here, exec path from shell, and then initialize it, that seemed to take care of everything. Um, this solved my problems with loading programs. Like I couldn't run Hugo from eShell because it couldn't find it in the path until I put that in. I installed the fish completion package, which gives me more completions. Um, I also installed here, I have this, this is the eShell prompt extras, but I um, I commented that out because right now I'm using the eShell git prompt, and I like that because if I go into an eShell, um, I get that prompt, but if I go eShell prompt git prompt use theme, like I can try the git radar theme, and well, I guess this is the git radar theme, so let's go to eShell git prompt use theme, let's go to Robbie Russell, and use another theme, and I'll dive more into that later on, and let's make this even bigger. Um, so the next thing I decided is, um, okay, if I'm gonna have to write my own um, shell switcher, um, like how do I want to do it? And um, I found on the Reddit, somebody commented that the way they did it is they had like a three-way um, decision. And the basic idea was, if we don't have an e-shell running anywhere, start an e-shell. If we do have an eShell, but we're not in it, switch to the most recent eShell. And then the third thing was, um, if you're in an eShell buffer, bring up a chooser to decide which eShell you should switch to. Um, and I also decided to add an option for that to, um, to do the next, um, to, um, 
add a new E shell. So let's go to a buffer where we can play with this. Let's go to a scratch buffer, and this is already in Lisp interaction mode. And so um, I've been programming an enclosure, so I'm familiar with things like, oh, it's not A plus B, rather it's the function plus on A and B, and I can do control X, control E, and that runs in the bottom. You know, so it's not, also it's not function of X, Y, Z, you know, if you're calling a function, but it's rather call function F on X, Y, Z. So I'm comfortable with that, because I've been using Clojure recently, but Lisp is a little, Elisp is a little bit different, and you know, all Lisps are different. So I ended up poking around, and the usual suspects, this introduction to Elisp programming um, is actually a very nice introduction. I learned Elisp originally through this. Uh, there's the manual here where you can look things up. All of this is, in, is available on Emacs under the info uh, stuff here. So I go to Emacs, info here, I can look up Elisp, and I can poke around in here, and I can look at various things. But to be quite honest with you, the info system feels a little dated to me, um, and I, I'm just more conditioned to use the web these days, even though it's the same information. But it is really nice that they did have um, that they that they have it uh, all built into Emacs. So, um, so the first thing I'm like is, well, okay, I've got to be able to figure out what my buffers are. And so I poked around, I did some searching, and I found the function that I wanted to use was buffer list. I mean, I actually tried two. I was like, well, maybe there's something list buffers. And notice that this completion helps you out a lot. Um, this is company mode, and this is global, whatever. So if I run this, OK, that's not what I want, but it's showing me my buffers. But I also have ah, buffer list. And if I run that down here, it's like, oh, this is a list of all the buffers that I'm running. OK, that's pretty cool. That helps me. So another thing that I figured I had to do was um, how do I figure out if a buffer is a, um, a shell buffer? And I, I found that I could find it out for my current buffer um, by typing in, you know, by getting the major mode uh, or by looking at the major mode. Uh, so like HV help variable major mode is that yes so major mode is a variable and that's the variable that holds my current major mode um but i had to find this for other buffers and basically what i was able to find is i could do the buffer local value major mode of some buffer so what we could do is let's um what is it set f set q okay set q buffer list to be that, and let's get the major mode for the car of my buffer list, and that's Lisp interaction mode. That's the, the first buffer there, um, and I could do that for each buffer. So now what I wanted to do is I wanted to filter this list, um, and so for filtering this list, I only want the ones that are eShell buffers, so what I found, I tried, oh, is there a filter? Well, that's not right, so I did a Google search uh, you know, or DuckDuckGo search actually, and found that there's a library, it's actually built in, and I actually don't need this for all versions of Emacs for the newer versions, CLlib, and that would let me run this function, CL remove if not, and that accepts a function, and then a list, and my function is going to be a lambda function, so a function um, with no variable. So for example here, if I have a lambda n of returning plus n5, that just defines a function. But if I then call that on the value 13, you'll see on the bottom that's 18. So it's an anonymous function. Um, and what we're going to do here is we're going to, the predicate we're going to use, so it'll only keep the values, it'll remove if it's not this, if equal buffer local value major mode and then the variable n. That's my, um, sorry, equal, so I want to close that. Actually, my parentheses are off here. Let's do that, right? So major mode n, no, buffer local value of major mode n. Yes, that is it. If that is equal to e shell mode, that's my lambda. And I want to do this for... Uh, my buffer list, I'll just hard code this to BL. Well, let's actually get the buffer list new each time. So if we run that, we've got an issue. Um, 
buffer list is the function that I have to call buffer lists. And so if I run this, you'll notice down on the bottom, I only have this one E shell buffer. Now, if I run E shell here again, it just brings me to this buffer. But if I kill this and I run this, I get nil. I don't have any E shell buffers. If I run E shell again and I come back to here and I can actually run another, get another E shell by actually giving it an argument, which is the name of the buffer I'll use. So now if I look at my buffer list, I have my buffer two and I also have my regular E shell. So if I go back here into my scratch buffer and I run this, you'll see I've got both of my buffers here. So I now have the ability to get a list of buffers. I have the ability um, to figure out if there's, um, I have the ability to figure out that the, um, there are E shell buffers because I can just take the length of this. Um, I can also tell if I'm in an E shell because I can look at my own major mode variable if I'm in that buffer. And then the last thing I've had to figure out how to do is how to do a completion. And for that, I use completing read. So that's just completing read, I think. Or completing read function? No, just completing read. Uh, oh, it's a variable I have there. So H, ah, control H. Eh, ah, stop, stop, stop. Hitting wrong keys here. Uh, control H, F, completing read. It should be in here. I'm describing, okay. Control H, F, describe function, completing read. Completing read default. Uh, there we go, completing read. Um, and this basically lets you... Um, you know, use completion like, 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 um, I guess it's the default, but I've got IV installed, so it'll do IV like stuff for that. But you'll see how that works. I have to provide that a name of um, li a, a list of names or a list of, well, actually, I'll show it. I can say do a completing read. Ah, let's see. Completing read. And then the first thing I need for my completing read is, and you'll notice at the bottom, I have a prompt. So my prompt is enter a selection. And then I have to give it a list. So we'll have item one, item two, a third item, and that'll be that. And if I run that, control X, control E, you'll see here on the bottom, I can now choose, um, you know, I can do my, my typing for completion, whatever. And then it selects one of them. So armed with all of this, I'm ready to start writing my function. So um, to be honest, I forgot how to do this, so I looked it up. So I'm gonna write my eShell switcher, and um, I'm going to pass into it an optional arg, which I'm not gonna use now, but I'll use it later on. I've got, you know, I, I should have my doc string, but I'm not gonna have anything to that. And this is gonna be an interactive function, because I wanna be able to call it by, you know, meta x whatever. Um, and so now I've gotta set up my variables, and I'm gonna use the let star form. And the way the let star form works is um, if I just do let, it lets me declare variables that I can use in this function. But I can't, well, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. So here I'm going to say my buffers, and I, actually my form for this is buffers is going to be CL remove if not um, lambda. And this is what we had before, EQ or equal buffer local value, major mode of n, close that, e shell mode, um, close that, um, buffer list, uh, to call buffer list, close that, close that, that closes my let, and I'm just going to return the value of buffers here because I just want to be able to test this. Close my let and bang and um, that does my defun and I can do my e shell switcher and I've got an error because it's swither. Uh, switcher And notice it brings up my two buffers there, so that works. But then what I also want to know, do on my let, is I also want to have my number of buffers. So the number of buffers, of number of e shell buffers, 
is going to be the length of buffers. Um, and I can just return here for testing purposes, num buffers, control XZ, gives me an error. Because I can't use buffers inside the same let, but if I change this to a let star, control XZ to evaluate, now that works. So that's why I use the let star. So I'm also going to want to know, am I in an E shell? So in E shell P will be if it's equal the major mode to E shell mode, whether I'm in an E shell mode thing right now. And I'll just return in, let's call it in E shell P. Run that, run that here. I'm not in an E shell, but if I'm in here in my E shell and I run my E shell switcher, it returns true. And notice I can just do elisp right in my E shell. So now I've got all the information I want um, to basically figure out what to do. So now I need a conditional and I decided to use a con. So I looked that up uh, to get the specifics for that. And the way it works is I have in parentheses, each in parentheses is going to be a form. If the first thing is true, then I'm going to do the second thing. So if equal, num buffers zero, we're going to make a new eshell. And I could just say eshell t to run it. Um, later on, I'm going to change it to deal with this argument, but I haven't done that yet. Um, so I know we have extra white space here, but that should work. Now if I run eshell switcher, it's not going to do anything because the con isn't true. But if I go to kill my, ah, if I kill my eshells here, so I now have no eshells, and I run this. It brings up an eshell because there weren't any. Now there are some. So now my next condition. So my next condition is going to be, well, let's see. Um, if I'm not in an eshell, I want to switch to the most recent eshell. And um, so, so basically, I'm going to say if um, not in eshell p. So if I'm not in an E shell, I'm going to switch to buffer the car of the buffers. And um, if you're not familiar with that, and I'll control X, control E to, to execute that, um, buffers is a list. And we have buffers, we have BL down here. If we look at the car of BL, it shows us the first one. Um, now, if we um, are only looking at a list of buffers, this buffer list, which is a list of only the E shell buffers, it'll go to the first one. Now, I think that whenever you switch to the buffer, that buffer moves to the front of your buffer list or of your list of buffers that buffer list gives you. So I think this works, but if not, I'm not gonna stress over it. But now if I run this, since I have an E shell running, it should just switch that E shell. So let's run LS here. And now let's do that switch and it brings up that buffer. Let's run another E shell. So let's go E shell two. And now we have another E shell here. So we have both of these. And if I go to here and I run this, this should bring me to two, which it does. Let's go to E shell one and go back to my scratch buffer. And that brings me to one. So that's bringing me to the most recent E shell. Um, so now that's two cases down. So the third case is we have E shell buffers because this is not true. And we're in an eshell buffer, so this one's not true. So what we're going to do is this is going to be our catch-all, so it's true. Whenever it's true, we're going to write another routine called select or create. And select or create is going to be another routine we'll write. We'll write this up here first. We'll say select, defund, select, or create. And it's going to take an arg. It's not going to be... Um, I'll put some commentary in here. I'm not going to do this for now. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to say if the string equals, and this caught me up for a while, if the string, if arg is equal to new e shell, um, then what we're going to do is we're going to make an e, a new e shell. So the e shell tr uh, true, but otherwise we're going to switch to buffer 
whatever the argument is. I don't like that indentation, but okay. So we'll run that. And so to finish this routine, we're going to run select or create. And what that's going to select or create on is on a completing read. It's going to ask us to select, ask to select, select a shell. And we're going to cons new e shell. So that's going to be an additional choice onto, well, I haven't created this yet, a list of shell names, of terminal names. And now to finish this off, we've got to create that last variable. So we're going to create something called names. And that's going to be map or map car in the case of um, elisp. And it'll be a lambda n, so an anonymous function. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take a buffer, we're going to get the buffer name of n of all of our buffers. Whoops. Uh, this should give us an error if we're not. Oh, no, we're okay. And what we'll do here is um, look at map car lambda n buffer name of n of list is it a buffer list just to show how it works and so you see it just gives us the names for our selector so now um, select e shell should work let's see if it works we'll do e shell switcher here it brings us up to this guy here now if we run e shell switcher again Notice now it brings up, do we want to go to one or two? We're in two. Well, well no, we're not in two. Now we're in two. Uh, let's do, uh, let's come here again and we'll do eShell switcher again. Let's stay in one, which it does. Let's do eShell switcher again. Let's make a new shell and there we have it. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, now the last thing here is um, I already bound this to control Z E um, and there we have it. And um, I just didn't have these functions to run yet. But that's pretty much it. And um, that's just using, you know, it just shows. So now if we go to the scratch buffer, um, you know, we can clean this up here, get rid of these guys here. Um, you know, clean up, uh, you know, uh, some of the parens here. Uh, we could finish to clean this up. I'll do that later on. Um, but it's not really that difficult. And all of a sudden now we've got our little function to do the E shell switching. And I'll, basically put this in my config file, I'll put this somewhere, you know, maybe I'll make a little package out of it, I'll figure out how to do that. Um, and there you have it. Uh, now, what I do want to figure out how to do is I want to, you see, ESOL switcher has this argument, and what I'm going to do here is I could change it to say if or arg t instead, and what this will do here is um, short circuit evaluation. So if arg is nil, since org or is true if either one is true. If arg is nil, it'll evaluate to this. This will be t, and so this entire thing is going to be true. And that's the same as e shell true. But if arg is something else, like the name of a buffer, it'll run e shell with that and give me that buffer name. I just haven't figured out how I wanted to call that yet. Um, that's my problem with it. So anyway, there you have it. A little bit of Elisp customizations. Um, I will put this up, um, you know, into my, I'll probably just dump this into the, you know, it's kind of short for the time being, right into my configuration file. Um, and that's it for today. So I hope you enjoyed it.